All right, so we're going to continue with extrema and critical points. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at a couple of examples where we strictly all we're going to do is try to find critical points, okay? So here's a function, polynomial function. Both of these are polynomials, right? So x cubed minus 12x minus y squared minus 4y plus 7. And we want to find all critical points, right? So we want to find the critical points. All right. Well, we saw in the last video that critical points by definition are the places where the gradient is zero. So we better start by finding the gradient. So the gradient of f is 3x squared minus 12 for the x derivative, and then minus 2y minus 4 for the y derivative. Derivative of 7, of course, is 0 in both cases. And I'm going to do a little bit more work here. I'm going to factor. Okay. If I pull the 3 out from the, uh, from the first component, I'm left with x squared minus 4. Factors is the difference of squares. Here, if I take out a minus 2, I'm left with y plus 2. All right. So when is the gradient equal to, equal to 0? So gradient is going to be the 0 vector. Well, we can see that this component is going to be 0 for either x equals 2 or for x equals minus 2. And here we always need y equals minus 2. So there's actually two possible points. So we could have x y equal to 2 minus 2 or xy equals minus 2, minus 2. Okay, not so bad. We'll come over here, we'll try this one. We'll see how it goes, see if it's any, uh, any different. So in this case, we, we proceed the same as we did over here. We start by computing the gradient. So we want uh, the x derivative. So 2x, that's 0 for taking the derivative with respect to x. Um, here we get 8y, right? And then we do the y derivative, we get minus 4y and plus 8x, okay? And we need that to be equal to 0, 0. Okay. Well, this one's actually not going to be so bad. Maybe we, we're going to tweak this in a second, make it a little bit more exciting. Because what do we get? Well, the first one says that we need uh, 2x plus 8y to be 0. Uh, the next one says that we need 8x minus 4y to be 0. And even if you're a little rusty on your 1410, you can probably work out pretty quickly um, that the only solution to this system is going to be x equals 0, y equals 0. So there's one critical point, and it's the origin, right? Uh, we didn't have to do any work to solve that one. Um, if we wanted to you know, make things slightly more challenging, we could throw in terms like, uh, you know, let's just put in like a, a, a 4x and maybe a, a 3y in there, right? And then, well, that makes things trickier because now I've got a, I've got a plus 4, I've got a minus 3, and then when I set these both equal to 0, well, then this 0 becomes a, a minus 4. This becomes a plus 3, right? Move the constants over. Um, and now you've got, a, you've got a system of equations that you've got to solve, right? Well, OK, probably getting carried away if we write down our augmented matrix and reduce. Um, you can do it if you want. Um, should we do it? Yeah, let's do it, right? That's good practice. 2, 8, minus 4, 8. Minus 4, 
three. Okay, so let's do um, let's do row two minus four row one. Put that into row two. I'm going to get two eight minus four zero uh, minus four minus thirty two more. Wow, minus thirty six. Okay, and then uh, three plus sixteen. 19. And, you know, maybe we'll do one more thing. We might say, let's do uh, half row one, make that the new row one. Why not? One, four, minus two. And, hey, why, I guess we could do, you know what? No, let's leave it. We'll solve in a second. Okay, so where's our critical point now? Well, the, uh, the second row says that y has to be, oh, geez, it's horrible now, right? Minus 19 over 36. And then x is going to be what? Well, x is minus 2 minus 4y. Oh, but that's uh, minus 19 over 36. Okay, so that's minus 2 plus Let's see, 4 over 36, that's 1 over 9, plus 19 over 9. Um, minus 18 over 9, plus 9. Okay. Minus 1 over 9. Okay. All right, so now you got your critical point, right? X is minus 1 over 9. Y is minus 19 over 36. You'll hope that if I throw something like this uh, at you on a quiz, I check to make sure the number is a little bit friendlier first. But... Yeah, this is the sort of calculation that you might end up having to do, right? So it, it is exactly the same idea and procedure that you use for finding critical points in calculus one. It's just that the algebra you've got to rely on, you know, becomes a little bit more complicated, right? Now we're, we're solving systems because we're dealing with more than one variable, right? So we've got two equations, two unknowns we've got to solve. Um, usually we choose these carefully to make sure that uh, that things don't get too complicated, things work out nicely, right? Um, okay, uh, so there's a couple of basic examples to, to show you how this works. Um, now the next question, of course, now we found these critical points, there, there's an obvious follow-up question, which is, you know, just like in, in one variable, probably we're finding these critical points because we're looking for, for max and min values, right? We want to know where is the local max, where is the local min. So now that I have these critical points, how do I, how do I tell, right? Is this a maximum? Is this a minimum? Do I have, you know, what do we do in Calc 1? Draw a sine diagram. That's not going to work. Second derivative test? Maybe, but what does the second derivative test look like in two variables? Um, that's going to be our next video.